2022. This guide will aim to teach you all the basics you need to know to get a good understanding of how to survive and thrive. Daisy is a sandbox game where your goal is simply to survive. You make up your own goals in each life. For example, your goal might be to try to make it to a couple military zones, get geared up, and then find some players to fight. Then the next life, you might just want to hang up by the spawn zones on the coast and get in funny interactions with other players. It's all up to you. First up, let's learn how to master dealing with zombies. Once you learn a few tricks, they quickly become less intimidating. When doing melee damage, aim your camera up towards the zombie's forehead. Attacks to the head will drop a zombie quicker. Learning to perfect the power attack will make you a master at melee. You can perform a power attack on PC by holding right click to raise your hands, and then hold shift and do a left click. You can perform a perfect punching combo called the 4 plus 1 with a full stamina bar, and then 4 power attacks, then a single light attack to the head. This takes a lot of practice, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. If you track too many zombies, run into a building and quickly close the door behind you. If your building has a window, you can typically melee a zombie through the window and kill them with minimal effort. Although zombies can hop fences, they can't climb, so jumping on top of a container, sandbag, or other tall object can often be another option to dealing with zombies. A two-handed weapon, such as an axe, pickaxe, especially a sledgehammer, is going to decimate zombies if you land a power attack on them with a headshot. Alright, let's go over the basics of the Daisy UI. In the bottom right, we have symbols for water, food, temperature, blood, and health. In general, icons in the white are the best and you're the most healthy. When you're in the yellow, your immune system is actually weaker and it's easier to catch diseases. Then, if you're in the red, you're in desperate trouble. Yikes. Water can be best found at water pumps in towns and items such as cans of soda. Be careful of contaminated water bottles or drinking from ponds. Those can make you sick. Boil water in a cooking pot by a fire to purify these sources of water and avoid sickness. Food can be found at towns, often in canned goods, Peaches are going to be one of your favorite items to find, as it gives a good amount of food and some water as well. If the can does not have a pull tab, you'll need a sharp edge to open it, such as a knife or a screwdriver. Keep in mind a large item such as an axe will open the can, but you'll lose some food when opening it. To minimize food loss, a can opener will be your best in slot item for opening cans. Temperature can be regulated with warm clothing. If you become extremely cold with a blue temperature icon, it can lead to health loss and even death. Being wet is a common reason for being cold. You can warm yourself by a fire and your clothes will eventually dry. You can even wring out the clothes by placing them in your hands. Alternatively, you can take the clothes off and place them next to a fire to dry them faster. Typically, Chinaris and Livonia are very forgiving on temperature, but if you ever play a winter map like the Mollsk on PC, you'll have to constantly be making fires and keeping yourself warm and dry very often. The blood icon will dictate any blood loss you may have received. For example, getting cut from an attacking zombie will cause you to lose blood. Patch up your cut with a clean rag. Dirty rags can lead to infection. Disinfect rags with alcohol to keep them clean. Going low on blood can cause you to pass out and leave you slow and vulnerable to attacks. To quickly regenerate blood, use a saline bag combined with an IV starter kit to create an IV saline bag. These items can typically be found in hospital buildings. The health icon you can think of as your typical life gauge if it goes to red and zero, you die. You can take damage not only from attacks, 
but you can also lose health from running low on food, water, in extreme cases, the cold. You will regenerate health by keeping your character healthy and your status icons in the white. There is one more status that does not have a meter, but it's called Shock. This stat is a bit more abstract, but basically if you take a heavy hit, it can cause you to pass out, which is pretty shocking in my opinion. For example, if you wear body armor and receive a hit from a sniper rifle, you may survive the shot but you'll also receive enough shock damage to make your character go unconscious for a short period of time. Shock levels will slowly recover naturally. So the common question, where to find food? Finding food can be one of the most frustrating challenges as a new player. Food can be found in markets, greenhouses, civilian houses, wrecked cars, and even sometimes on dead zombies if you get lucky. After spawning in, I would actually recommend to only stay in the starter zone for a short period of time. Scan the nearby houses for cans of food, and stop by a water pump for water. Then immediately head inland. Do not travel further along the coast, because you will likely run into another starter spawn zone with similar food rarity issues. You will often have better luck with food with the towns further inland. One of the best sources of food is from animals around towns such as chickens, sheep, and cows. Chickens will be easiest to catch and can be punched out with your fists. Skin the chicken with a knife and you will get chicken breasts. Keep in mind, you'll get bloody hands if you do not have gloves on. If your hands do get bloody, try to wash them immediately at a nearby water pump. You can also make improvised gloves easily by putting two rags in your hands and selecting craft improvised hand wrapping. Wearing gloves will protect you from getting bloody hands. One of the easiest ways to cook raw meat is by making a fire in a house with a chimney. Gather sticks from a nearby bush. If the bush gives you long sticks, you can break those sticks down into short sticks with your hands. Place the short sticks in the fireplace. Attach a rag and then light the fireplace with a road flare, petrol lighter, or a hand drill kit. Now attach the chicken breast to the metal rack in the fireplace. Watch the chicken and take them off the rack when they're done. Do not let them get burnt. Boom, you now have a tasty snack to eat. The medical system in Daisy will feel overwhelming at first, but you'll get the hang of it. The most confusing part is that there is only one sickness icon so you will not know what sickness you have unless you memorize the symptoms and think back on what actions you took previously. Let's start simple. To heal cuts, you'll need rags or bandages to stop the bleeding. Rags can be made by cutting up clothing such as t-shirts. The issue here is now you can get wound infection from unclean rags. Wound infection will cause your character to grimace in pain you can clean your rags with alcohol tincture, iodine tincture, and disinfectant spray. Cure stage 1 wound infection by applying alcohol to your wounds. Cure stage 2 wound infection with tetra pills. If you break your leg, you'll need to craft a splint. Combine 4 rags and 2 sticks. Although a fractured leg will heal on its own in about 20 minutes, a splint will reduce that time by about half so you're looking at about 10 minutes. 
chlorine tabs can be used to clean water and is basically a replacement for having to boil your contaminated water. Tetracycline, also known as Tetra, is one of the most versatile medications and it can help cure wound poisoning, the grunting, the common cold, which is coughing and sneezing, and cholera, which is vomiting from contaminated water. Multivitamins will boost your immunity and increase the effectiveness of other pills. This is one of the only pills that you can actually combine and it will increase the effectiveness of your other medication. Codeine will reduce the limping effect you get from being at low health and also reduce coughing from a cold. Morphine will completely remove your limping and allow you to full sprint. Epinephrine will wake a player up from the unconscious state and it also provides infinite run stamina for a period of time. You can use this on yourself and it can be great for a firefight where you need to move around a lot and you're holding your breath often to keep your aim steady. It'll give you that extra boost in stamina. The Pox Antidote will cure a player of gas poisoning, which you can get from being in a toxic zone. This is a more advanced topic, but just know that toxic zones can randomly drop on cities around Shinaris and can be very confusing as a new player. Basically, if you hear a loud boom and you see a gas cloud falling from the sky, run out of the city immediately. This gas will rapidly apply cuts to you and can even give you gas poisoning. Your only protection from getting this sickness in a gas zone will be a full set of NBC gear and a gas mask. Now that we have the basics of surviving down, you might be wondering where to go. Find the name of the town you're in by locating a nearby road sign, often found at the entrance or exit of a town. Match this town name up with an online map, such as the website I Survive. Take a good look at the map and plan your next course of action, often heading towards a nearby military base for weapons. In general, on the main DayZ map, Chinaris, the more northwest you head, the better the loot gets. Daisy can be a lot of fun as a solo challenge, but to get the most out of Daisy, I would recommend staying open to teaming up with random players. Some of the craziest adventures begin with random team ups. It creates a tense dynamic between the advantages you get, the surviving easier as a team, and then also the limited trust factor you have with each other. Everyone who has played this game long enough has been betrayed once or twice, but with every betrayal, you've had plenty of great friendly team ups. To show you're friendly, do a friendly wiggle, wave, and use your microphone. Having a working microphone is essential in Daisy. Many experienced players you meet will subscribe to the idea of no mic, no life. Speaking of subscribing, if you found this video helpful, please consider clicking that subscribe button and the like button. Making YouTube videos is what I do and it's a huge help to me. I make a whole range of beginner Daisy videos, such as the two on the left hand side. Thank you and have a great day.